nel cielo infinito. Roberto, tell me, what did you do back home? Government work. I'm retired now. It's just a boot. That's the median nerve that I'm compressing. So che un sogno così non ritorni mai più. Nel cielo infinito. Greetings, everybody. I'm glad that you came to the Caption Media channel and I hope you enjoy the video. Today, I'd like to discuss the action crime movie, The Equalizer 3. Without giving anything away, I'll just give you the review. So let's get going. First of all, some box office statistics. In a post-pandemic first, Equalizer 3 has drived summer domestic revenue to $4 billion. The Denzel Washington trilogy is performing significantly better than anticipated at the Labor Day box office, while Barbie has surpassed all previous records by earning $600 million domestically to become the year's highest grossing film globally. There are many positive aspects to this sequel, um, such as the stunning scenery um, Denzel Washington's incredibly calm performance. But at times it's difficult to ignore the fact that it lacks some enthusiasm. The horrific but very inventive opening sequence in Equalizer 3 gets the movie off to a good start. McCall has been taken by surprise and his subsequent response gives the character some weight. His rehabilitation in a lovely village is delightful. There is a, a beautiful moment when he's using his cane to navigate a stairway and he comes across a kind elderly woman who is also using a cane and she advises him to go slowly. The villain, villains that break up this piece are, to put it simply, a bit bland and uninspired on this occasion. There are no grey areas to be found because these are ruthless mafia goons who are just interested in hurting others for money. It's not intriguing and it gets harder to care about as the movie builds to its big confrontation. Additionally, where the final showdowns in the previous two Equalizer movies were masterfully choreographed with intelligent use of space, nothing particularly noteworthy including the routine sequence in the Equalizer 3 that takes place in the villain's home. Oscar winner Robert Richardson occasionally shows off gorgeous cinematography, especially in the sparkling evening views, but eventually this third instalment ends on a weirdly unsatisfying tone, as if the series went one sequel too far. Even though Denzel Washington's Robert McCall has managed to break more bones on film than John Wick, he was starting to lose his edge. The Equalizer 3 feels like a much needed farewell for Robert McCall. In this third instalment, the director Antoine Fuqua, um, who directed Training Day, keeps true to the saga's core principles while giving the superhero a well-rounded, if repetitious, ending. And as anticipated, and as I mentioned earlier, the Equalizer 3 opens with a viciously cruel action scene. After leaving a bloody trail in the Sicilian um, vineyard that belongs to a powerful mob lord, Robert McCall reappears. However, McCall is not really after the mob lord, despite the fact that he makes sure to flawlessly eliminate all of his highly skilled security guards. McCall is searching. The outcomes of this horrifying opening combat will establish the tone for the entire film, albeit we're not quite sure what that is yet. Despite his success, McCall leaves the location in a relatively poor condition. Fortunately for him, a noble carabinieri discovers him and discreetly arranges for Altamonte, a small beach village, to provide him with medical care and consolation. And Robert McCall discovers that the Dolce Vita is a good fit for him there. The sounds of the sea, children playing in the street, old films in the plaza, excellent espresso coffee after lunch and decent working class folks with a strong feeling of community. Why not adore it? However, La Camorra is poised to put this tranquil area of the Amalfi Coast in danger because they want to evict the people to make room for hotels, casinos and other tourist attractions. McCall is the only person capable of defending um, the villagers from harm a bit in a John Wayne, Western-style, lone-suffering hero type. Um, it's another example of uh, the American saviour complex. The Equalizer series have ne has never shied away from its intentions. This is an ultra-violent uh, male power fantasy where a hero rises above a broken justice system and is the only one defending the defenceless against the slime of society. 
and the equaliser is the 21st century equivalent of Clint Eastwood's vengeful cowboy. McCall serves as judge, jury and executioner. He is a hero who takes it upon himself to instill morality in modern criminals because he detests the fact that they have no moral principles. He battles against practically everything in the Equalizer 3, the Italian Mafia, jihadi terrorists, gentrification, the dim-witted CIA, the dirt on the restaurant table, etc. I mean, your choice. There isn't a circumstance he can't save, teetering on a psychopathy that this story keeps avoiding. Of course, watching Denzel Washington repeatedly humiliate evil guys and break the cocky criminals' heads is incredibly enjoyable. Let's avoid becoming overly enamoured with the joys of fictitious violence, which we can enjoy in the secure environment of the cinema, without bringing home the troubling lessons that it occasionally seems to impart. This third time around, the hero's otherworldly qualities are paired with Dakota Fanning's Emma Collins, a rookie CIA agent who runs a parallel investigation on the Italian drug trafficker McCall has uncovered while following his own pursuits. She is the other side of the coin for the movie's understanding of justice. It's great seeing um, Dakota Fanning reunite with Denzel Washington almost 20 years after Man on Fire, although unfortunately they don't share many moments together on screen. The Equalizer 3 will surely please fans of the previous movies. After all, they share the same raw action, ostentatious visual style and abundance of killer one-liners. The saga's DNA hasn't changed one bit. This time, the hero's almost superhuman abilities are combined with Emma Collins. She represents the opposing viewpoint to the movie's interpretation of justice. Since the earlier films feature the same raucous action, showy aesthetic and profusion of killer one-liners, The Equalizer 3 will undoubtedly please fans of the originals. Nothing in the saga's genetic makeup has changed. Given how satisfactorily the film wraps up McCall's narrative, it could even be able to convert some sceptics. This third instalment seems like a standalone one-man army adventure, despite a few unexpected allusions to earlier story events. However, this third instalment has a glaringly unoriginal quality. In the end, Fuqua provides little more than the good, the horrible and the downright ugly that was anticipated. Washington is incredibly endearing as the systematic killing machine, giving McCall's transformation a subtle joy. This was a persona who, although always serene, was nevertheless constantly on alert. Now in this film he exudes a new feeling of ease. Even though the movie's main plot is somewhat predictable, the small nuances really matter. Denzel Washington's performance and Fuqua's willingness to go graphic help it deliver the goods. Washington continues to be believable, displaying a ferocious, and frequently terrifying intensity in the action sequences and a true tenderness and empathy in others. Ignore the film's numerous flaws and concentrate instead on Denzel Washington's strength and charisma as he closes out the third and final instalment of his Equalizer trilogy on a strong note. You don't want to miss him because he is a star. With a few entertaining staccato line deliveries, Washington manages to stay awake. You could say on in this film, rather than being a man on fire, he's a man on simmer. The build-up is ruined by the jagged distribution of the flurry of needlessly vicious violence, though. Even though we've enjoyed seeing Robert McCall make things right on his journey from Boston to Sicily, it seems like the moment has come to give the man some space, so he may enjoy his time sipping tea and looking forward to his afternoon siesta. I'll rate this movie on a, a 7 on a scale of 1 to 10 and sincerely hope you enjoy it. Do leave a comment if you found this movie enjoyable. Please do subscribe and click on the bell icon for updates. I'll catch up with you again soon. See you later. Bye for now. I'll give you to decide your fate. Oh. Roberto, tell me, what did you do back home? I'm retired, man. They see you as one of us now. This is where I'm supposed to be.